This is Dr. Peregrino Brima, and straight to the caption, the father of modern evolutionary biology is the man I'm about to introduce to you. His name is Al-Jahiz, his full name is Abu Uthman Amr ibn Bahar al-Kinani al-Basri, because he lived in Basra, which is a modern day Iraq, I believe. Um, he's the unsung hero. He's a scientist, a philosopher, uh, professor, sc researcher, scholar, any any name you can call him, and he lived in the nineteenth in the ninth century. Now you can imagine how how um, elated I was when I just discovered this uh, last couple of days that the actual father of evolutionary biology is a black man his nephew wrote of him that his father was uh, an african that he's a black man and a believer in god actually a muslim not an atheist or disbeliever not a caucasian or white man not charles darwin who discovered who claimed to have discovered evolutionary concepts in the 19th century we are talking about a black man a poor man, very poor, as he wrote of himself, uh, a believer in God who first thoroughly wrote of evolutionary concepts. The same concepts that Darwin later, quote unquote, plagiarized and presented to the world as his own originals. This black man wrote of these things. He lived from... Um, he was born 776, he died 868. A thousand years earlier, he wrote these original concepts of evolutionary biology, um, transformation of species. Um, he described embryology, evolution, adaptation, the food chain. He wrote extensively of these things in his book, The Book of Animals. And um, it's reported that Darwin and his father actually studied, understudied this guy, this black man who was widely read and who produced so many works. He was an Arabic prose, an expert in literature, theology, mutazili theology, political religious polemics, science of evolution, taxonomy, systematics, where you classify organisms. He has a book where he wrote about 350 organisms and classified them in groups and subgroups. Um, let me show you who we are talking about. So this is a depiction of Al-Jahiz, the black man, a believer in God and father of modern day evolution and in fact um, biology as we know it today. Now he lived in um, Basra, modern day Iraq, in a period when Basra was going through what is called the Islamic Golden Age, and it was a period of intellectual and cultural revolution um, where there were massive libraries. It was like this aggressive competition for, you know, gathering and developing knowledge and philosophy. So books were being imported from all over the world. Now, the, the period tragically ended when the Mongols came and, you know, killed so many people and they burned the books, a lot of books. And it was said that, you know, an ocean was black from, you know, I think ashes of burnt books. And then another ocean was red from the blood of the people. So that was how that period ended. But Al uh, Jahiz's works were preserved and you know carried to the Western world, and you know, so what happens is typically the Europeans who you know travel around the world they um, carried a lot of information from Africa and uh, Middle East, and then they republish this information and claim it as their own without giving credit to where it was found. So you can imagine how elated I was as a black man when I discovered that it was a black man who actually is the father of the concepts that we have in evolution today. 
and I was not shocked because I do know about you know how this information is always stolen and plagiarized. You know, we all know what Alexander um, did in Egypt. Uh, we know about Timbuktu, Mali, the first university of the modern world, the Sankore University, and how they came and burnt and you know looted books, and the books that you still have that are preserved in Mali were buried to protect them from being looted by marauding you know, people. So we know this history. So it, it was not a shocker to find out that it was actually a black man. But the difference is, you know, Al Jahiz was creating this work from a religious point of view where his evolutionary theory was based on, um, you know, uh, divine laws that guided the competition of the animals. Whereas when Charles Darwin comes a thousand years later and understudies his work, he and his grandfather Erasmus, they come up and redefine these things and present it as if it's happening random, you know, uh, by chance, and present it as an atheist type of work to discredit um, God, who Al-Jahiz uh, Al Al is working based on inspiration that he's getting from the, you know, from the holy, uh, Muslim holy, holy book. Now, we, we know that um, Charles Darwin was a racist. So um, his, you know, he comes about with this whole theories of, you know, multi-origin hypothesis, claiming white man comes and the, the white man and black man originated separately. So the black man is still, you know, not as well developed. And that's why you have this, um, this guy, this is Otabenga. Otabenga at that period, you know, was locked up. He was a black man who was locked up in a, in a zoo, a Bronx Zoo in America, just 100 years ago. And this was a time when, you know, these, um, these um, racist concepts, the Darwinian theory was being used to promote racism. So we see the contrast in the way scientific knowledge is presented and you know the damaging effects to society and then worse worst off when it's you know uncredited scientific work and distorted now let me let me expand the screen to show the next slide okay okay so what al has described was three mechanisms of evolution so he classified it in three basic mechanisms the first is struggle for existence which that one rewrote as, you know, survival of the fittest, um, you know, the competition between organisms. And this brings about the second concept, which is the transformation of the species into each other. And al Jahiz uh, extensively described this process as, you know, a fight between species for survival and with different adaptations. So he described adaptation aspect of evolution and how the species, you know, change over time with heritable changes. And, you know, he described a competition interspecies from one species group to another and intraspecies between each individual group. And he discussed how, you know, the species actually change. Now he's describing this as God, you know, using one species as food for the other and God, you know, directing how one species evolves you know, to conquer its its area over another. So he described that as a second concept. And the third concept that he laid down was how environmental factors influence this. So you have this picture made for him from his book, which he wrote, which was the book of animals. And he, dis he mentioned 350 varieties of animals. And he divided into them into groups and subgroups as systematists and, you know, taxonomists do today and you know link them to each other and as they ascend from a single ancestor um, he described psychology he wrote extensively of psychology and sociology of animals and intelligence of the animal species it's, it's just really fascinating when you read his work now the interesting thing is unlike what you know charles darwin's work where he's um, bringing it about from this atheist point of view of random events the actual origin of evolution is from a religious, a monotheistic faith point. So this is a, a verse in the Muslim Quran, chapter 29, verse 20, which the Quran tells the prophet of Islam, 
to travel in the land and see how he, God, originated creation. Mark that word, originated, like evolved creation. And then God brings forth the later creation, mentioning that, you know, there are stages, one creation follows another, which is what evolutionists uh, find out today. So Alja, you know, Alja, he's wrote so much work. He basically laid down the foundation of biology as we know it today. And it's amazing. Um, Dr. Shavanas, T.O. Shavanas, you know, wrote about this stuff and he complained about it in his book. Um, he wrote that Darwin and his grandfather Erasmus were influenced by the work of Muslim scientists who lived centuries before them. Um, and he said, for instance, he quoted from John William Draper, 1812 to 1883, the first president of the American Chemical Society, a contemporary of Darwin and a former president of New York University, who said, uh, summarized that, um, I have to deplore the systematic manner in which the literature of Europe has contrived to put out of sight our scientific obligations to the Mohammedans, which is how uh, they used to refer to the Muslims back then. Surely they cannot be much longer hidden. Well, a hundred years later, uh, this stuff is still being hidden, but not anymore, you know. So the idea, the, the difference is, you know, the, 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 the way Darwin, from an atheist point of view, when he writes about this stuff, he attributes the changes to um, nature. And you say, Mother Nature did this. You know, we say today, we say natural disaster. Nature did this, nature did that giving this being to nature as the, you know, the force behind, the intelligent force behind. And it's called Mother Nature because if they say the word Father Nature, people are going to realize and be like, hmm, Father Nature, are they talking about God? So they attribute these things to this so-called Mother Nature. And then that's, 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 the, that's the difference that you see. So you, you can get um, Shavanas' book to buy, to read up on this stuff, or you can find it in libraries. His book was Islamic Theory of Evolution. The missing link between Darwin and the origin of species of the species, and you can see the cover has Darwin with this patch over his eye, which is not trying to say he's blind according to uh, blind in one eye according to a review by Edip Yuxel. But the reason why they put this patch is to say that you know um, there's evident there's um, they said that the cover picture is not meant to disparage or vilify Darwin, but it's meant to describe the common attitude among the proponents of the theory of evolution as they ignore the important contribution of Muslim scientists. So that's, so that's the blind in one eye. And they abuse the theory by associating it with unwarranted philosophical conclusions such as atheism. So we automatically get the picture of why the sources are being excluded. So you can find that to buy. So this is very, very interesting stuff that, you know, the world definitely has to know about. Let me expand the screen on this side. So like I said, I'll put links here, but you can Google all this information. So here are the things that inspired um, Al-Jahiz to his work from his reading of the Muslim Holy Quran. You have Quran chapter 6 verse 2, which says, He, God, created you from clay. And then he spent a term away from you. So this is the evolutionary period. Uh, and it is a specific term he determined. Um, this is Quran 71, 17. And God, Allah, has caused you to grow from earth a progressive growth. In some areas, it's written stage-wise, okay, in different stages. Um, another one, Quran 64, 3 says, He designed you then made your design better another one 4064 he formed you then made your forms better so this is you know evolution of species i believe um you have this one quran 30 verse 27 says god originates creation see the word again originates then reproduces it and we see that we notice the different stages reproductions of creation in different forms and for him it is most easy Another one says, um, Quran 11, 61, it is he who has produced you from the earth and settled you therein. Um, let's look at some other similar, this website, again, science.com. Another concept where you see modern concepts in biology uh, that appear to have been 
derived from you know ancient um, religious books the Bhagavad Gita the Quran the Bible this is on the Big Bang and you can see the classic definition that the universe began billions of years ago as a tiny dot that exploded into today's huge system of stars and planets now this is what you find in the Muslim Quran uh, 2130 it says see that the heavens and earth same as stars and planets were fused as one unit of creation a tiny dot before we clove them asunder exploded you can see the same concepts um, in religious uh, books you have this verse to Quran 2445 Allah has created every living thing from water and those who move on their bellies and those that walk on two legs and some of them walk on four so these are the basic concepts of evolution that we have today that all things came out of war you know so al Jahiz, you need to look him up uh, this is very important uh, these are pictures I believe from his book you know great scientists so join the conversation let's talk about this and spread this around let everybody know about you know the truth about science and discoveries and you know the role of religion versus you know the manipulation by others. Thanks for watching this Dr. Peregrino Brimer.